All right, so you got to be really, really careful with iron. Positive 3. We already have a neutral configuration from earlier. Positive 3 means that you are losing electrons. In this case, you are losing 3 electrons. That is a cation. So we will just remove them. Okay, so here's where you have to be super careful. Electrons come from... The, I know that they fill the 4S, but they always, always come out of the highest orbital first. Not this, the highest energy level, not this one. So the highest energy level in this compound is the 4S. They come out of the 4S. It's this weird thing that happens where the 4S, when it's empty, is lower energy, but from the 3Ds. But then once they both get filled, he ends up being higher energy. So it's weird. They fill first and you lose them from there first. Or you can just remember whenever you form any kind of a heavy uh, transition metal cation, they just come from the highest energy level. So we are going to lose these electrons here. One, two, and then also one from my 3D. I'm going to lose my paired electrons. Are you seeing this? That's the one I'm losing. Again, I'm losing my paired electron. This is kind of like reverse Huns in a way too. So my configuration, we don't actually write down empty orbitals because chemists think that that's a waste of time. I don't know. I didn't make up the rules. So one, two, three, four, five. So those are my five, 3D. And then I would have one, two, three, four, five. There you go. All right. So this is where you cannot use the isoelectric thing. If... We used iron, and we just said, oh, he's losing three electrons. That's like saying he's actually vanadium. It doesn't work for the transition metals because vanadium, his configuration would be argon, and then 4s2, 3d3. Do you see how that is? Not the same thing as argon, 3d5. Not the same at all. You cannot use, when you're doing this cation business, you cannot use method two for anything in the D block. You can use it in the S block and the P block, though. 